Hello, hello. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Why don't you teach Becky to say that soon? As we are live and have no child care tonight, uh, Beckett will be either a part of this live or running around screaming during this live. So if that's not something you're interested in, yeah, <laughs> we are. <laughs> it is what it is. We have a 15 month old. We can, considered old. locking him in the basement, but Nisha vetoed it. So, hmm. yeah, maybe he'll behave. If not, hey, that's just more fun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, how are you guys doing? How you been? How did the week go for you? Did you do good or did you flub up? <laughs> also, we're in the kitchen, so the background's different. The lighting's kind of blue tinge. I don't know, but. I look cyanotic a little bit. Yeah, we both look. But then it goes pink. I don't know. It's weird. Anyways, anyways. Beckett, you want to say hi? Can say you say hi. hi to that baby? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys watching from this evening? What city? What state? What country? Where are you? Did you stick your tongue out? Oh, yeah. Where's your tongue? Oh, yes. There it is. <laughs> good. good Very job. good. I love All it. Right. So we're going to spend the next hour. <laughs> Did you, what was that? Did you toot? Yeah. There you go. There's a baby fart for you. No extra charge for that. Good job, Beckett. One day we're going to look back on this, and it's just going to be the best memory ever. Remember that time you farted on a live, Beckett? Water. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the circus. Welcome to our family. Yes. All right. So uh, there was a question while we were waiting to go live that was a really good question. So we're going to tell you it was from Ima. And she said, um, I wanted to start keto, but I'm scared of fat and I love Fruit. Yeah. So Ima, is that what you said? Ima. Yeah. Ima. Okay, Ima. Here you go. Step one, remove any food that has added sugar. Okay, that's going to get rid of 90% of the processed crap that most people eat every day. Step two, get rid of all grains, all of them. Wheat, rice, oats, corn, amaranth, millet, quinoa, all of it. Step three, get rid of all vegetable oils. Don't use shortening, don't use canola, don't use cotton oil, cotton seed, cotton, cotton oil, uh, corn oil. Any of those things, use animal fats to cook with. Step four, eat more meat. And in your case, you hate fat. I hope you continue to try to learn to like fat. But until you do, just eat meat. Eat the fattiest meat you can currently tolerate. Eat until you're full. And since you love fruit, you can still have a few berries or a piece of fruit here and there. Make sure it's raw and fresh. Never canned. Never cooked. And that's going to be a great start on moving you towards a very healthy, nutritious, and delicious low-carb diet. And then when you're used to that and you've really started to like it and you've branched out and you started to like fat a little more and you're like, you know, I'm getting some health benefits from this, but I wish I could feel even better, then you can lower the carbohydrates even more and then you'll be keto. But, but low-carb is a great start for 99% of people out there. No, you can't have those. Did you see him? That was <laughs> him mimicking <laughs> you. That's what he was doing. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. He has been a mama's boy today, by the way. This is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Raggy's currently trying to chew my shoe off. This is going well. Yeah, this is great. This uh, is real life, people. Thomas says, I'm strict clean keto. Ketones average one to three, glucose 50 to 80, and I can't seem to drop any more weight. What can I do? A fast 23, <laughs> a fast 23 hours a day, but no matter what, I can't get under 186, and I'm 5'2". So you've already, I'm assuming, lost some weight, it sounds like. But what you're at is what we call a weight loss pause. Sometimes it lasts a few weeks. Sometimes it lasts a month. But don't forget, you're still reaping all the health benefits of eating a proper human diet. But the one thing that you really want, the weight loss, has temporarily paused. It is not permanent. Uh, go back and look at your diet with fresh eyes and make sure that some carbohydrates haven't cre crept into your diet. Because sometimes that happens to us very often. Uh, make sure there's no hidden carbs in any of the stuff you're eating. And make sure you're accurately counting your 
total carbohydrate carbohydrate intake. I, Becky just rattled me. I can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that is going to either keep you at your pause, which means you're not gaining weight. Congratulations. That's a good thing because most of us gain weight. But also, eventually, this pause will unpause, and then we'll start to lose weight again. I hope you don't try to, like, ask me anything because I'm not going to know what you're talking about. Sarah wants to know, will almond flour work for fried green tomatoes? Yes, but I recommend doing pork panko and parmesan. It will work better. It will taste better, and it's less inflammatory. Not that almond flour is bad and that you can't eat almond flour, yeah. but for some people, they – do see some inflammation from almond flour so and also almond flour has carbs it does so has it's lower carbs. carb uh you can use it and you can do <laughs> almond flour pork panko and parm or you can just do pork panko and parm yeah either way it's really really good key we is, started off doing all three but yeah. now it's just parm and panko the key is to soak them overnight and that that makes them so soak them in heavy cream is what i soak them in you should do buttermilk and i think buttermilk probably still would be okay but yeah. Okay, Mariah wants to know, is going in and out of ketosis during pregnancy dangerous? No, not at all, as long as it's a, a nutritional ketosis. Now, if you're becoming ketotic in pregnancy because of dehydration, then that, that may be something that your doctor wants to address with oral fluids or IV fluids. But if you're talking about nutritional ketosis because you're eating very low carb, there's no danger to that whatsoever. Is anybody watching this with their baby? And is your baby misbehaving as much as ours? He's really not misbehaving. He's just plain. Uh, right. Pork panko means crushed pork rinds. You can buy them on Amazon or you can just crush up with pork rinds. The last few hours. Cynthia wants to know, will coffee with cream break a fast? For some people, it seems to really raise their insulin level and thereby break the physiological fast that we're trying to, to help you learn how to attain. For others of us, it seems like a splash of heavy cream doesn't really raise our insulin level at all. The best way to judge it is, are you currently making good progress towards your health goals using the heavy cream? If you say, no, everything's moving in the right direction, then it's fine. Keep using it. But if you stall, that would be one of the things to look at maybe uh, trying to go heavy cream free for a month and see if that unstalls you. Dr. Jason Fung just did a really great video on YouTube on what breaks a fast. He specializes in fasting. It's basically what he does every single day with all of his patients. And he really breaks down why water fasts are the purest fast and when you yep. add this in what it does and yep. all that. It's a really good video. So. Yeah, and the very best fast of all is just water only, water and salt. That's the ultimate fast. Uh, but for many of us, we still have weight loss and move towards our health goals with a tiny splash of heavy cream. <laughs> Get your head. <laughs> oh, okay. right there on the head. Quit. Right. <coughs> There's too many. Hey, you didn't cry. Moving stuff. parts. <laughs> Reggie, quit. Read that. Reggie loves to play with the baby, but he loves to play with the baby with his teeth. Bread and butter lover says, Dr. Barry, how many hours do you recommend fasting if I want to eat as many fats, proteins, and carbs and alcohol as I want and not gain weight? Raise trigs or oxidize LDL. I have mastered the 36 hour fast and in full ketosis. Well, um, the problem is, is if you're eating too many carbs and drinking alcohol, you're going to raise your triglycerides anytime you eat. Uh, you're also going to raise your blood sugar and your insulin level. So this is not a penance type thing. You're not, uh, you're not being punished by fasting. Fasting is not a punishment. Fasting is a gift that gives us many great health benefits. So don't look at it as in, well, if I, if I, you know, uh, deprive myself for how many hours, 72 hours, 128 hours, then I can have my beer and, and, and onion rings. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid it doesn't work that way. But do what you want. Yeah, do what you want. We still love you, but that's probably not going to be a long-term sustainable solution. Kate says, I have a hernia on the opening from my esophagus to my stomach. This is called a hiatal hernia. 
so it never fully closes. I also have ulcers and IBS. I am also obese. Can I do keto? Okay, you 100% can do keto. I also have a small hiatal hernia and used to have the, the most amazing heartburn reflux pain uh, that you can imagine. And keto made my heartburn 80% better. I still have the hiatal hernia. Uh, carnivore made my reflux heartburn go completely away, even though I still have the hiatal hernia. So I don't want you guys to think, oh, I have this hiatal hernia. I'm always going to have heartburn. That's not always the case. Now, if you have a huge one, that makes your lower esophageal sphincter incompetent, then you might always have some heartburn until you get that fixed. But if you have a small hiatal hernia, many people have one and they have no heartburn on keto or carnival. Dexter says some bodybuilders say they need carbs to gain muscle and eat thousands of calories a day to get there. Is that healthy? Huge fan. Uh, Jackster, you know, some bodybuilders think they need to shoot up with steroids two times a week too, to, but I don't, I don't uh, recommend that. I also don't recommend eating high carbs. There are many, many premier level athletes now who are very low carb keto or carnivore and they're, they're doing very, very well. Becky, can you speak on why keto is ideal over whole food plant-based diets for weight loss and how to baby make it? So the problem with whole food plant-based, and by this I assume you mean no processed grains and no sugars, you can lose weight on that diet. But the problem is, is that plant foods are, are much less nutrient dense than meat, than animal foods. And so you're going to have to eat a lot more total volume of food. And that may sound like, oh, I get to eat more. That's good. But we're talking about you're going to get to eat lots more raw broccoli and raw spinach and raw stuff. And if you love that, that may be great for you. But you're going to have to eat pounds of food to get the new pounds of plant based food to get the nutrition that you could get in ounces of animal based food. We see this in the gorilla who eats a plant based diet. They have to eat for 16 to 18 hours every single day to fuel their gigantic bodies. And if you eat a plant-based diet, I'm afraid you'll have to eat more often and more volume than you may want to eat. And anytime you eat carbohydrates, even if they are complex carbohydrates like raw plants, it's still gonna raise your insulin a little bit. And that's still gonna lead to some of the chronic conditions that we talk about. Karen wants to know, does diet pop stall you? Well, some people it might because it, the sweet flavor raises their insulin level. <clears throat> Come here. Come the sweet taste raises your insulin, and anytime your insulin's high, you're not going to burn fat. And so, for many people, it could stall your weight loss. Now, many people use diet soda or diet pop as part of their keto diet because it's zero carb. And that works for them for months and months for a, a good first leg of their journey. But then for that second and further legs of your journey, you may notice that you need to cut down on the sweet tastes in your mouth to get your insulin level low enough to lose that next round of weight that you want to lose. All right. <clears throat> Ed says, will phylum kick you out of ketosis? It, probably not, but it's going to it's going to put tons of fiber in your colon and it's going to make you have huge hoots and if and bowel movements and if you're eating uh beans and stuff like that you're going to have ungodly uh odiferous gas so there's really there's really no health benefits of psyllium that i've been able to deduce reading reading the literature a lot of health gurus promote it but it really doesn't do much for you yeah, Andrea, I said poots. Romilio, Romilio. says, uh, how often should I prolong fast? Three-day fast once a month question. If, if you enjoy fasting and a three-day fast once a month doesn't seem too rigorous for you, you're going to get great benefits from that. If you do some good time-restricted eating daily and low-carb the rest of the time, uh, but, but a longer fast like that's not mandatory but it will help you reach your goals faster. There's no doubt about that. The ultimate weight loss is not eating. 
Sydney wants to know what helps thyroid nodules. The thing that you first need to do to help your thyroid no nodule is see your doctor and get your nodule diagnosed. If it's thyroid cancer, then there, that's a whole different algorithm of things you need to have done. If it's just a nodule, if it's a gorder, uh, then there are different things that you could do. Eating a proper human diet, regardless of what health condition you have, Cindy, is going to help you be your healthiest. So see your doctor about those nodules if you haven't already, and then eat low carb. All right. Kathy says, can you explain the difference between A1C and a C peptide <clears throat> test? How can I have high insulin and low glucose? Yep. Excellent question, Kathy. So first of all, your A1C is a rough average of what your blood sugar has been running for the last three months. That's what a hemoglobin A1C is. Okay. The C-peptide test is a proxy marker for how much insulin your pancreas is having to make. So here's how you can have a normal A1C and an elevated C-peptide. And this is very important to know. I've got YouTube videos about this. If your A1C is normal, but your C-peptide is high, then what that means is, is that your pancreas is having to work overtime producing insulin in order to keep your blood sugar level and normal. At some point, if you, so you're still eating too many carbs for your personal physiology if you've got normal A1C and elevated C-peptide. You want to lower the carbohydrates down to the point where you have a normal A1C and a normal C-peptide then you know you're eating the proper amount of total carbohydrates for your personal physiology. But now this is a very important question, Kathy asked. If, if you still need this to be explained more, watch my C-peptide videos on YouTube. Mitchell says, I found some bacon that's cured in sodium acerate. Uh, is that a good form of vitamin C? Yeah, sodium ascorbate is first cousin to vitamin C, but it's, it's not really a useful vitamin C. But it is a good way to, <laughs> to cure bacon. It makes it tasty. So it, it's not bad in any way, but I don't think you're going to get your daily supply of vitamin C from it. Crystal, can being ketovore for a long time make you glucose intolerant? Um, no, all humans by design are intolerant of too much exogenous glucose. So eating too much sugar, we're all intolerant of that. If you feed us enough sugar, we're going to develop symptoms of intolerance. Amatsu says blood pressure raises <clears throat> and palpitations every time I go a week on zero carbs. Any ideas? My doc says my heart is fine and I'm using daily minerals and lots of salt. A carnivore may not be for you, Amatsu. You may you may do best sticking with keto. I think some people do better with uh, lots of fatty meat and some veg, and that may be the diet for you. <coughs> this is going perfectly. Shut up. <laughs> How can I get ketones <coughs> without buying mesh? I don't know so, uh, what a NAD is or why you would that. have to buy it. You don't have to take exogenous ketones. If that's, if that's what you mean, you, you, you get ketones by making them in your body by eating a very, very low carbohydrate diet. Brylan says, on the keto diet, eating 20 carbs or less, how long do you think one can reverse type 2 diabetes? How long or how long does it take to reverse? Yeah, you, it's going to take from weeks to months, depending on how bad your type 2 diabetes is. If your hemoglobin A1C is 6.5, so barely diabetic, you'll reverse that in two or three weeks with 20, 20 total grams of carbs or less a day. If your current hemoglobin A1C is 14.9, then it's going to take a few months, but you're still going to reverse your type 2 diabetes with that amount of carbohydrates. Denise, <clears throat> Denise says, what's your opinion on MCT powder? I think MCT powder is completely unnecessary to do keto right. Now, if you enjoy it and you want to use it, I don't think it's dangerous or bad or harmful in any way. But for 99% of people who are trying to be in nutritional ketosis, it's completely unnecessary. Declan says, is there a link between a lack of proper fats and depression? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, Dr. Georgia Eads is a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and she's done tons of articles about this. Thousands of people have reported to us and other people in the low-carb community that their depression got better with, with keto, their anxiety, 
they're ADD, they're um, uh, obsessive compulsive, even schizophrenia and autism, and, uh, all these things we've had report, reports that got much, much better with keto. And so definitely keto is not going to hurt you or make your depression worse. So why not try it for 30 to 90 days and find out? Uh, Drew says, I've been doing keto since November, but I still have sugar cravings on an almost daily basis. I've never had <clears throat> blood sugar any advice? Yeah. A lot of people find that sugar cravings last a long time. Uh, there's this thing called the cephalic phase insulin response, which definitely raises your insulin if you taste something sweet or eat something sweet. But also the, there's research that shows that it, the cephalic phase insulin response will raise your insulin. If you see a commercial for Dunkin' Donuts or if you, if you see someone order a pizza and you didn't even eat it, you just saw it, smelled it, looked at it, thought about it, that can raise your insulin. And, and so when your insulin raises, your body's expecting sugar. And if it doesn't get sugar, sometimes that can provoke a sugar craving. And so make sure that you're distancing yourself from all things, television commercials, magazine ads for that, that hot fudge sundae at Sonic, all that kind of stuff. Don't look at it. Don't think about it. And you may find that that actually helps your sugar addiction, your sugar craving. Uh, little Southern Brother says, thoughts on keto with someone uh, with fibroid uterine cysts. Yeah, uterine cysts and fibroids are abnormal growths in the, the uterine wall, the uterus. Insulin has a growth hormone-like effect on tissues in the human body. In other words, high insulin levels make things grow inappropriately. This includes lipomas, fibroids, all these things will grow inappropriately if you're eating too many carbs and your insulin level is chronically high. That's why so many people have reported that their fibroids actually shrink and their symptoms get better when they eat keto. Kumar says, my son has been diagnosed with mild cerebral palsy. Is there any solution? He has right hemiplegia with no speech. It depends on what you mean by solution, Kumar. Uh, you might be able to improve the symptoms and slow down any progression by eating a proper human diet and having your son do that. But uh, cerebral palsy with that much of a deficit, uh, you're probably going to be left with some permanent deficit. In Boto number five says, I'm wanting to try celery juice for breakfast. Is it going to kick me out of ketosis? First of all, the most important question about celery juice for breakfast. Girl, why? Why? Why in it the world? It tastes horrible and it does nothing special. There's, Have some bacon. I've read every book by medical medium. Okay. Does that surprise any of you guys? There's nothing magical about celery juice. It, there, it does not cleanse anything. It does not rejuvenate, renew. All of that stuff is bullshit, okay? It, there is zero evidence, zero research that supports any of that. Medical medium, he gets his health ideas. He talks to a spirit. You know that, right? Literally, he admits that. Well, that book. may not be where she got that. Well, I don't know anybody else that recommends it. He's just the biggest guy. That All the it. healthy guru influencer yeah. girls no. drink celery juice. No. I eat bacon and I feel amazing. Eat your bacon and eggs. But it probably won't kick you out of ketosis if you're just. I don't know how many carbs. It not has. many. Probably not many. Uh, <clears throat> it's mostly fiber and disgustingness. <clears throat> don't do it. Yeah. Don't over. feel like you have to do that. Don't do that. Steven says, yes, Nisha is right. Eat bacon. Eat your bacon. All right. Sherry says, would keto carnivore be good for someone with cystic fibrosis? Yeah. If virtually any medical condition, that person who has that medical condition should eat a proper human diet. And that is, by, by definition, a low, low carbohydrate diet that is has no sugar, no grains, and no vegetable oils. Low carb, lots of meat, little bit of veg. That's that's the proper human diet. All uh, right. Everybody's saying eat bacon, eat bacon. <laughs> Anybody else want to try celery juice for breakfast? Now, I understand wanting to think it's, it sounds like it should be healthy because it tastes awful, right? <laughs> right. And it's green. And that's what we've been brainwashed. Yeah. If it tastes bad and it's green mm. and all these people are doing it on YouTube, then yeah. I mean, yeah. And those skinny models are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just don't do it. Carly says, "Do you have any? Uh, do you have any? <coughs> I think I have bacon stuck in the back of my throat. Do you have any advice or resources to learn more about the proper human diet for children?" 
So the proper human diet for children is exactly the same proper human diet for you. It is meat plus or minus a little bit of veg. Okay. That's literally it. Uh, he started eating meat when he was five and a half months Four old. Four months old. Four months. He got this first little twofer right there and he started chewing on meat. That was his first food. He's been eating ever since. Now he mostly played with it at that point, but mm -hmm. he's been eating real food for most Almost, I mean, really most of his life Yeah. supplemented with breast milk. I'm yeah. still breastfeeding. We're fixing to start winning. We've already started a little bit, but he eats meat. Sometimes he'll eat an avocado. He likes tomatoes. Pickles. He, he gets pickles. Cashews. Olives. Uh, he likes berries, which he very rarely gets. He had a few today because in my, what I eat in a day vlog on my YouTube channel, we made chocolate covered strawberries for my birthday and Valentine's Day. And they were awesome. <laughs> but for the most part, he prefers meat over if I gave him a plate full of different kinds of food, he would go for the meat every time. Yep. yep. He loves cashews. We have to hide them. Yeah. He would eat the whole bag. Yeah, he does. He's a nut. He, yeah. get that. he gets that from me. Yeah. But if you want to see what he eats, I show that in my vlogs. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, it's in the link up here on Facebook down here on YouTube. Yep. Uh, Maria Emmerich and I did a Facebook Live about children's nu nutrition on my YouTube channel. What else have I done about children's nutrition? I've got a few more videos on YouTube about it. Yeah, just, uh, there's a few, but you haven't done as many as you should do, honestly. Iguana Lizard said, I just had a baby. I've been doing keto for a month. Why is it so hard to lose baby belly fat? Well, it just is. It depends. Takes some a while. It depends, though. For some women, breastfeeding helps you lose weight. For some women, it will stall you. Um, depending on your hormones and what exactly you're eating. I went <clears throat> carnivore right after I had Beckett and I lost the weight really, really fast. And I gained, I was up to 165 when I had him and I'm five foot two. Like I gained a lot of weight. I had very high cortisol <laughs> during my pregnancy. But I, if you're wanting to lose the weight and you're breastfeeding and you're confident you'll, you'll be okay, then carnivore is the way to go or keto. <clears throat> yep. That is a very specific question. Can you answer this? Michael says, why is my anion gap levels low on keto? A, your anion gap uh, could be low for multiple, multiple reasons. Uh, I would see your doctor, Michael, and discuss that. There are many reasons for a low gap. Keto is not one of them. Uh, if your doctor blamed it on keto, that's a red flag that your doctor doesn't understand human physiology. Crystal says, what should the carb limit be for eight to 10 year olds? I wouldn't even think in the terms of limits for a kid. I would just make sure that they're eating lots of healthy fatty meat and then find out which small group of vegetables they like and let them eat some of those. Then they can have some berries for dessert. What you want to do rather than restrict stuff for kids is encourage the good thing. You don't want to ever be negative about food with kids. Yeah. And Always putting, positive. Putting numbers and stuff, especially if it's a girl. Yeah. Don't can, do it. can no. be, really be a dangerous path to go down. Yep. Um, so, yep. yeah, I, I would never count carbs. I would just promote healthy yep. whole foods and stay away from bananas. And grapes. <laughs> and grapes yep. and those type of really, yep. really sugar heavy <clears throat> fruits. All right. Well, that's an answer to a question. Okay, hang on. They're going so fast, I can't read it. Okay, uh, Ross says, is keto carnivore good for varicose veins? Yeah, we've actually had a few women reach out and say that their varicose veins have gotten substantially smaller and less noticeable on keto. And that makes good sense because you're decreasing the inflammation in the vein wall. And you're also eating a diet that's filled with all the nutrition that you need to rebuild good, healthy veins. Remember, all the body parts are replaced all the time. New cells are constantly forming. You probably completely replace your vein wall every three to six months. And so if you're eating a proper human diet and not eating or drinking or smoking anything inflammatory and calm down the inflammation, then they're definitely not going to get worse, which is the usual course for most women. They get worse as you get older. But they, in many cases, people report that they get better. Deborah says, do eggs hinder iron absorption? I don't think so. Okay. Joy. Hello, Joy. <coughs> Joy says, my mom had a mild stroke 
has mild short-term cognition issues. Her diet is so lean, so she has a sweet tooth. She's worried about cholesterol, fat causing another stroke. How do I convince her that low carb is best? Well, Joey, I would just say, Mom, you're already eating very, very lean, and you're eating lots of sugar. Maybe the reason you had this small stroke was because you're eating all the sugar because you're, you're not eating fat. So why would you think that eating more fat would cause you to have another stroke when eating sugar caused the first stroke? Maybe, maybe if you phrase it like that. And also tell her, Dr. Barry said, eating fat's not going to make you have a stroke. Yeah, see if she, maybe she'll watch some videos. Um, yeah. who's, who's a good heart expert that we could Oh, send? Dr. Brett Shear yeah, is a, a cardiologist who's 100% keto friendly. He has a ton of videos online. Yeah. Good for you for trying to help your mama. That's a good it's, daughter. It's hard to help your parents sometimes. All right. Oh, brothers. I eat carnivore, but my body <clears throat> craves cocoa for the health benefits, not the sugar. I make my own chocolate with cocoa butter and stevia. I can't find it where I live. Is it worth it for the benefits? What benefits do you think cocoa gives you? health wise. Oh, there's all these. I know there's a lot of things. gurus who say the antioxidants and the phytochemicals, but have you actually read objective evidence that cocoa benefits you in some way? I used to believe that too. I'm not being an ass. I'm just asking. No, yeah. Uh, because I used to believe that. Yeah. I thought the darker the chocolate, you it, you and should it eat it like it. medicine once a day. And a glass of red wine with it. Right. Yeah. Because red wine is magic. Yeah. yeah. When you actually look at the research on cocoa and red wine, it, both of them are foolishness. Does that mean I don't? If you want some chocolate wine? and red wine, Hey, go ahead, help yourself. But Valentine's Day coming up. Call it a treat. Don't call it uh, health healthy. Benefit. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Shoot, that's not the one I meant to click on. That's okay. Janine says, "Can I make my health worse by half-ass ketoing?" <laughs> I love this question. It's good. Wrong cooking oils, more protein, not as much fat. I don't think the protein-fat ratio is as big a deal as some people make it out to be, but definitely cooking with the wrong oils. If you're cooking with vegetable oil, then that definitely, you could still be in ketosis using canola oil or, or corn oil, but that's not healthy. You don't want to do that. Yeah, get rid of the bad oils. Throw those away. Yeah, that's probably the most important part of being keto for health reasons are those really bad seed oils. They're awful. That for you. Oh, here we go. Mara. Mara says, my doctor says I need carbs because I have hypothyroid. Oh, I wish we had someone who has a thyroid problem who eats a carnivore diet, which is no carbs. Well, I oh, eat, hi. I eat ketovore. So under 10 grams daily, sometimes way less than that. Um, and I have Hashimoto's hypothyroid. I've never <clears> felt better. My labs are amazing. I feel fantastic. I have energy. My hair is great. My skin is good. It's set, set for now. It's broke out because of hormones because I'm weaning this child. And apparently that's a symptom. But um, yeah, I read all that stuff that you read. I read the elimination diet and all of that stuff. None of it worked for me until I cut out all the crap and ate <clears throat> fatty meat and a few veg that I found I'm not sensitive to. So give it a try and see how you feel. Yep. Kelly B says, does the ketogenic diet affect POTS in any way? Yeah, we've had multiple people tell us that their, their POT symptoms decreased significantly on a very low carbohydrate diet. So try it for two or three months and see if it helps your symptoms. Um, Christina is hypothyroid and she's carnivore. There are several. If you don't follow <clears> the <throat> grass fed girl, she actually lives right down the road from us. She's a Nashville girl, too. She has Hashimoto's hypothyroid. She is a carnivore. Um, it's very common. So, Okay. Eyes to see says keto for hemorrhoids, question mark. So it's a good question. It, hemorrhoids are basically varicose veins of the back door area. That's what they are. They're the same, the same thing. Uh, a lot of people say they're caused by not eating enough fiber and you have to strain at hard bowel movements. May or may not have something to do with it, but it's basically caused by inflammation and weak vein walls. So you're going to eat an uninflammatory diet and you're going to eat a diet that's nutrient dense like keto or carnivore. That's going to give your veins all the nutrients they need to as they replace the cells to build it with new stronger cells. Now, if you have a thrombo thrombosed hemorrhoid, keto ain't going to help that. You're going to have to go and have a procedure with your doctor 
But if it's just you've got hemorrhoids, uh, many people have reported that they shrink substantially with keto. Uh, if any of you see someone asking, will keto help with this, and you have experience with that particular thing, please feel free to tag that person, reply to that person, and tell them, I have hypothy, I have high blood pressure. Fill, fill in the blank, because that is super helpful for people to see. Crystal. Oh, I get asked this question all the time. Crystal says, Nisha, what makes your ketones so high and your glucose so low? What are your tips? <clears throat> uh, fasting, mine is 90 to 100. Most of it for her is genetic. She does eat a very, very low carb diet, which is mandatory to be in ketosis and to have normal blood sugar. But part of it, I can, I can, I would have to fast for four or five days yeah. to have ketones as high as hers. And they're not always that high. It's when I, it's after I pass 18 hours every time. If I test before 18 hours, it's 1.7, which is still high or 1.6, 1.2. It, for him, he eats way lower carb than me, sometimes fast longer than me. He never tests that high. His blood sugar is never that low. I am not uh, insulin resistant. I am insulin right. sensitive. Yeah. I've never had any blood sugar issues. But for me, because I, I, I've just always had a high metabolism, except for when I gained all the weight with high yeah. blood it, it looks like from the trends that we're seeing that people who tend to fatten easily, not, not for hormonal reasons like Hashimoto's, but just... Like if I went back to eating the old way, I would blow up like a balloon, right? Those are the people who don't get into as deep a ketosis without fasting for a long time. Now, do you need to be in that deep of a keto a ketosis? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, millions of us have benefits. I'm currently down 70 yeah. pounds. My one sees normal and I never have ketones. It doesn't mean I'm doing hurt. it better than anybody right, else. Right. It just means that my body reacts to the way I'm eating in that specific way and it shows up like that but it's i'm not over here really killing it i eat when i want to eat i fast when i want to fast I'm, I'm not doing anything i don't have a secret i can't yeah, tell you part a of it's genetic i wish i could it's not a competition just do the best you can do and reap the benefits sometimes i test if mm -hmm. i'm over if i'm over 18 it's usually my ketones are four hey nabil from montreal montreal oh, dang it that is Okay, we're going to go with it. Okay. Nicole says, keto carnivore and feeling freezing cold all of the time. Yeah, most of the time, Nicole, when that happens, you're just not eating enough. You're still maybe even unconsciously portion restricting, okay? You need to eat until you are comfortably stuffed, full. Not, oh, I've eaten enough, I better stop. No, that's not what you need to do. And eating that extra... Protein and fat is going to raise your metabolic rate and that's going to help you feel better. Also, make sure you're getting a good source of iodine in your diets, either from the foods I talk about on my iodine rich YouTube video or from uh, the daily minerals drops from Keto Chow or from Lugol's 2% iodine solution. He hasn't touched that all day, but now it's going to be for a solid hour. Karen says, Hashimoto's, I'm not on any medications. Do I need iodine supplements, raw nori, drops, brand? What do you say? Every human on the planet needs a good good source of daily iodine. Now, you can get this from, from nori, from seafood, from crustaceans, from shellfish, from seaweed, or you can get it from a product like uh, Keto Chow's Daily Minerals or from the Lugol's 2% Drops, which you would use one drop or two drops each day. But I would much rather you get it from food. Absolutely. Just watch my YouTube video about iodine-rich foods. Beckett is now playing the piano for you. Oh. Baby B is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's wild. That's for sure. <coughs> you would think with no source of sugar in his diet, he wouldn't have any energy. But mm. somehow, All right. he's got energy. Uh, Ball Bro says, when doing carnivore and OMAD, should I worry about only eating a thousand calories along with 48 hour fast? I always eat until I'm comfortably stuck. This is a great question, but there's multiple factors. First of all, how tall are you? How much do you currently weigh? What is your ideal body weight? How old are you? Are you a man or a woman? I'm guessing a man. Uh, and then also, how much stored body fat do you still have? So if you're morbidly obese, then what you're doing right now is fine. But if you're, if you're slender, then that's probably not. And, and, and then the last thing is, 
Are you doing that every day, just getting a thousand calories, or is that just some days? Uh, because if you get a thousand calories today, but then tomorrow you get twenty two hundred, that's fine. But if you're getting a thousand calories a day, that's probably not going to be enough long term, unless you still have a ton of weight to lose, and then that's okay. Lisa says I bought Lou Gauls and I can't open the Twisted hard. Listen. That used to be a very big problem for me. So what I did was gave it to your husband. Let him well, well, yeah, but then I ran it under warm water. Yeah, and that, that helps. Helps too. That so, helps too. Yeah. I don't Not know too hot or you'll melt the rubber thing. Oh, you can also burn your finger. Okay. <laughs> Amanda says, what vitamins and minerals should I take while breastfeeding? Make sure you're getting an excellent source of vitamin D. Eat the vitamin D rich foods I talk about in my YouTube video. And you probably need to take somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 every day. Because if you're making, if you're eating enough vitamin D, you'll actually produce it in your breast milk for your baby. But if you're not getting enough vitamin D, you won't produce any vitamin D in your breast milk. Get down. The second thing is iodine. You got to make sure you're eating iodine rich foods. Iodine is, is intimately related to our IQ. There are studies in Asia where children who are deficient in iodine, their IQ was 10 to 12 points lower than children who were getting enough iodine in breast milk. So you want to make sure you're getting plenty of iodine. That's, and then all the other vitamins and minerals. So if you're eating lots of fatty meat, eat some organs, eat liver at least once a week, and eat a little veg, and then make sure you're getting extra D and, and enough iodine. Those are the big ones. Them. I try not to answer the same person multiple times because I feel like it's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah. Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Is eating chicken and turkey a lot okay on keto carnivore, or do I need more beef? I think beef is probably one of the very best meats for humans. But if you love chicken and turkey and you're doing great moving towards your health goals, I think chicken and turkey are fine. Try to get chicken and turkey that's been raised appropriately, like they've been allowed to run around and eat bugs and grass, because that's when you're going to have the best quality chicken meat and turkey meat. But even if you're buying the cheap stuff at the big box store, I think it's fine. Uh, but but I would try to get some beef in there once or twice a week. Sandy says, I'm coming to keto from Weight Watchers. What advice do you have for me? First of all, welcome. welcome. Congratulations. Welcome. You're one of millions. You're fixed I just, to be such a happy one. I just read an article today that the Weight Watchers on the stock market, their stock is tanking evidently over the 2021. Even with their new branding. Yeah, they're, they're literally starving to death because they refuse to have a keto version because they hate keto because keto is taking all their customers. And I, I'm sorry. Listen, if anybody's watching out there from Weight Watchers, just go keto. Okay, but let's answer Sandy. Change question. it to Keto Watchers. I got, I'm not done with Weight Watchers yet. Okay, mm -hmm. swallow your pride. You you you're wrong. You've been wrong since 1969. Weight Watchers sucks. It never works long term for anyone. That's why you haven't gone out of business. So before you do go out of business, because keto is about to bankrupt you. Maybe just change it to keto watchers and tell people to eat lots of fatty meat. Okay, I'm done. Now, Sandy. Okay, let me, since you okay. already went on. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, my advice to you is throw everything that Weight Watchers taught you out the window. 100%. And, and start from scratch. Yep. Uh, watch Dr. Barry's videos, watch mine, find all the keto people that um, are, are not trying to sell you a bunch of crap. Yep. Uh, you don't need bars. You don't need shakes. Any of that That's stuff right. that went with Weight Watchers, you don't need That's any right. of that stuff. Eat real food. Yep. Eat fatty meat. Keep yep. your carbs under 20 total grams. And that's a good place to start. Do not worry about all this package crap that looks pretty and they take pictures with it. And no, yep. you don't need the shake bottle. Or celery juice. Yeah. You don't need any of that. Of that. Real whole fatty meats, low, low carb. And, and uh, our great Pyrenees can open the door himself. He just let himself in. Yeah. Yeah. And stay away from bad oil. So cook with bacon grease, beef tallow, butter, butter ghee, olive oil is okay. But we don't love yeah. it. All but avocado oil. Well, I got to go. Okay. Becky's going to take off outside. Oh, that was a good one. Where'd that go? Yeah. Okay. So Jacob says, can everyone eat healthy keto? Is there anyone who shouldn't? There is a very tiny percentage of human beings 
who who should eat either should not eat keto or should eat keto under their doctor's supervision. Uh, these people are people who have been to a, a pediatric geneticist who right. have a genetic disorder, who have yeah. an inborn error of metabolism. They will have seen an endocrinologist, a geneticist, and their pediatrician about 5,000 times before they're three or four years of age. There's maybe three or 400 people in the whole United States who can't eat keto. If you are a normal person, you've never seen a geneticist or an endocrinologist in your life, you 100% can eat keto and benefit from it. <laughs> this is awesome. Raggy. I've never heard the Berry family make so much noise. Oh wow. Oh, uh, this is okay. Brad says, hypothetically, should I stop intermittent fasting after testing positive for a certain unnamed popular virus? Uh, actually, you heard uh, the, the old thing about uh, starving a fever. I think that for pretty much any infectious disease, viral or bacterial, fasting should be a part of your battle against any infection like that. That's, I don't know where it went. Where'd he go? This all right, we'll go with it. Colin, hey, Colin, from Australia. I need a question answered if you're able. I'm just about to have uh, my thyroid, thyroid removed. removed. Five centimeter growth came back as uh, cancerous. Now I have to go back and get the other half removed to be safe. I'm about uh, to slap somebody. <laughs> my Shut question up. is that is this diet suitable or good in my situation with cancer? And no thyroid. Many thanks to your for your time. Thanks, Colin, for your question. I'm going to put the dog Let the record show. I didn't touch the dog. I just Come here, Rag. Spooked Come him. here, buddy. Uh, so, yes, Colin, you're going to have a complete thyroidectomy when all is said and done. So you're going to be on thyroid replacement hormone for the rest of your life. Try to talk your doctor into putting you on a, a natural desiccated thyroid replacement like Armor, Nature, WP, NP, or Urfa. You can go back and watch this again and write those down. But you absolutely need to eat a proper human diet, even though you're not going to have a thyroid. No other diet is going to give you the benefits. The record show why I didn't hit the dog. Yay, 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 yay. Okay, Kip, I don't know where your question was, but I saw it several times. What if I can't afford grass fed beef? Okay. Yeah. Eat the cheapest beef you can afford. Eat the eat the best beef you can afford. We can all afford the cheap beef, right? There you are, Kip. Yeah. So so Grass fed, and I'm I'm re-listening to uh, Sacred Cow by uh, Rob Wolf and his and his excellent partner, and they they make it very clear there's there is a tiny health benefit from eating grass fed, grass finished, panda massaged beef, but it's not worth the price difference for the vast majority of people. Eat the best quality meat you can afford, and if that's hot dogs and bologna and spam, then that's the best meat you can afford, and that's just fine. Apparently, Aldi has grass-fed beef for a reasonable price. I don't know if you have an Aldi in your area, but check mm. that out. Uh, I've heard that from several people. All right. Rope. Oh, my gosh. This is going to – thanks for all the questions, but if I'm having a hard time, it's because I can't read. Okay. Rose says, why does blood sugar rise <clears throat> while fasting and after exercise? Yeah. So there are certain cells in your body that cannot burn – ketones or fatty acids for fuel. They have to have glucose. Your liver knows this. And so when you're fasting, your red blood cells, since you're not eating any glucose, any carbohydrates, you have to make some and your liver's happy to do that. And that makes your blood sugar go up. And then also after you exercise, your blood sugar is going to go up because your red blood cells, they don't have nucleus and they don't have mitochondria. <laughs> they don't have a nucleus. So they have to burn glucose for energy your liver's happy to make that for them. But when it makes it and excretes it into your bloodstream, your blood sugar is going to go up temporarily. That's totally normal. It's perfectly fine in both these situations. So nobody freak out if your blood sugar goes up a little when you fast. It's normal. Nobody freak out if your blood sugar goes up a little when you exercise. It's normal. Bread and butter keto says is, lady, is keto for lazy asses that don't want to exercise. Carbs gives a lot of energy to exercise. Yeah, there are many elite level athletes that eat very low carb or zero carb. And they could probably uh, out exercise the majority of us. They have plenty of energy, plenty of stamina. Uh, Zach Bitter just broke the 100 mile race world record. 
and he eats very, very low carbohydrates. So somehow he got some magical energy to run 100 miles. And, you know, he averaged he was running uh, seven-minute miles the entire 100 miles. Okay. She's not impressed. By uh, no, that. we need to get these questions answered up here. Can keto fix tinnitus and uh, hypercusis? Uh, I haven't heard feedback about hypercusis, but there's definitely a hyperinsulinemic and inflammatory component to tinnitus. And I've got a YouTube video about that, I think. If not, I'm, I'm working on one. But 100% yes, it, it will decrease your symptoms with tinnitus. Hypercusis, I haven't I haven't done any research on it yet uh, or heard any feedback, but I'll look into that. It's a good question. Okay. And then Giuseppe says, I wish to get my grandparents both 80 on keto, but afraid where to start because of their meds. They have arthritis, high cholesterol, diabetes. Any, appreci any yeah. advice is appreciated. So if they're on diabetes medication, you're going to lower the carbohydrates very slowly. You're not going to do it very quickly, definitely not overnight. And you're going to work with their doctor and say, hey, they're going to be eating. We're going to get rid of uh, added sugar. Say it like that. And we're going to get rid of processed food. Say it like that. The doctor will like that. And the doctor will work with you. If you say, I'm going to put them on keto, your doctor may not work with you. But your doctor needs to decrease the diabetes medicine and probably the blood pressure medicine as you lower the carbohydrates. Because their blood sugar and their blood pressure are going to return to normal. And if they're still on the medicine, they might have, it might go too low. Okay. But that's, that's what I would recommend for elderly parents. I'm so glad that you love your parents enough. We all should take care of our parents like that. They absolutely can benefit from keto, but you can't just do it overnight and not let their doctor have time to adjust the medications. And basically when I say adjust, I mean decrease slowly and then stop because that's what's going to happen. Um, I can't pronounce that word. Uh, Sam says, can hirsutism get better even if it runs in families? Sam, there are some genetic variants of hirsutism that you're probably stuck with. You're just going to have to make friends with somebody who owns a hair removal laser. Uh, but if your hirsutism is from, was it a boy or a girl? I, I it, didn't. it wasn't a oh, name. Okay. Was like if your hirsutism is from a hormonal is, yeah, problem like PCOS or low testosterone, then you're probably going to notice a, a, that your hair is not as dark and it's not as thick, not as pigmented. And it's going to kind of return back to baby peach fuzz like all humans have everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Baby. Cheryl says, best thing for RLS that's made <coughs> with keto. Um, also, does it matter when during the day you take your vitamins such as magnesium and zinc? Yeah, I would take my vitamins with a meal. The best best thing for RLS that's made worse with keto. I don't understand. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that, Cheryl. Retype it and we'll try to find it. Retype that first sentence. I don't, I'm not getting your wording there. Baby boy. Here's a good one. Sarah Marie wants to know, do type 1 diabetics have to eat carbs? That's a great question. So you, if you're currently on a lot of injected insulin, then you need to eat carbs to match your insulin. But tomorrow you need to call your doctor and say, hey, I'm going to start doing a low-carb diet. And if your doctor kicks up a fuss, you're going to say, wait a minute, doc. The American Diabetes Association has a low-carb option in supplement one of their guidelines. You've read that, right? And then your doctor will go, um, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Low carb. Sure. And then you're going to say, I need you to help me lower my insulin as I lower the carbohydrates. And you, Sarah, and your doctor, you might do this over a few weeks or even a month or two, slowly lower the carbs and slowly lower the insulin. And when you've got your carbohydrates, you can eat carnivore. You can eat zero carb if you want but you're going to need way less insulin. You're going to save so much money. Either you or your insurance company is going to save a ton of money by you going keto or carnivore. But so that's the answer to that. No human needs carbohydrates, but if you're currently a type one and you're injecting insulin, you do need some for now until you lower your insulin. Red Rancher says, what do you recommend for someone who is type one hypertensive and extremely salt sensitive? It's difficult for me to balance my sodium. Yeah. The reason you're salt sensitive right now is because there, you, you're very hyper insulinemic. <laughs> As you slowly lower your carbohydrates and lower your insulin, you're going to notice that salt just doesn't affect your blood pressure like it once did. This has happened with tens of thousands of people who are no longer on blood pressure medicines and salt doesn't move their blood pressure at all. 
Justin wants to know if my ketones are 0 0.6 when I wake up, is this normal? Yeah, it's fine. You're, you're, you've been fasting all night. You're in ketosis. Make sure you don't test unless you're just fixing to eat. You need to wait your, till the very end of your fasting window if you want to see the best. That's the best time to test. Yep. Um, I saw a mayo, mustard, or ketchup question. So mustard, definitely. Zero carb mustard is the best. If you're going to eat mayo, make sure it's made with coconut oil, uh, real avocado oil, or bacon grease mayo. We've got a, a YouTube video about how to make it yourself. It's freaking delicious. Uh, ketchup, I don't eat ketchup because even if it's no sugar added, it still has lots of carbs in it. Primal Kitchen probably has the best ketchup out there. It's pretty tasty, right? It's tasty, but it's expensive. Yeah, it's pricey though. Yeah. Anthony wants to know, what are your recommendations on cardio for obese people? Not for weight loss, but for everything else, including heart health and strength. So I wouldn't recommend any cardio. If you want to get stronger, you need to lift some weights. You need to uh, do body weight exercises. That's going to strengthen your bones. That's going to strengthen your muscles, including your heart muscle. And it's going to make you a stronger person. Reed wants to know, where can I get affordable lab work done when my doctor refuses to order them? On Virtually every one of well, let me see. Go to my YouTube video about C peptide, and in the show notes, there's a link to truehealthlabs.com in case you forget that. And you can click on that, and then you may not want the C peptide. I hope you have that's probably what your doctor won't order. So there you go. But then you can order any other test from them, and they'll send you the order and they'll tell you to go to this local lab and you get your labs drawn, and your doctor can kiss your and my. Next question. <laughs> okay. Anybody listening out there, if your doctor refuses to order a lab, any lab, if you're saying, hey, doc, I got my checkbook out, I'll pay for it. I just need you to order it. If your doctor refuses to order a test at that point, that's a huge red flag that, that you may have a clunker and you may tra trade that one in. That's, I mean, now if you're trying to get your insurance and you're trying to get your doctor to lie about a diagnosis to get the insurance to pay for it, I don't blame the doctor. But if you're saying, hey, I'll pay for it. I just want the test and they won't order it. Hmm, yeah. Jody wants to know, have you used the breathalyzer ketone meter and is it accurate? Yes, we've tried it at one of the conferences. Ketocon, yeah. And I think it is pretty accurate. But the problem is, is it tests for acetone, acetoacetone. Uh, so if you've been drinking, it can actually sh make you appear to be in ketosis. Or it's chewing gum. Yeah, or chewing gum. It's basically, basically a breathalyzer. And so if you if you haven't been drinking, then I think they're very accurate. Or chewing gum. That's not even the main reason. They're way more expensive than blood super, meters. And blood expensive. meters are plenty accurate. <clears throat> they're so super expensive. I definitely don't recommend yeah. them. If you want to test ketones, get the blood meter. Yeah, and they're all pretty much the same, honestly. All right, one more question. He's being good now. Okay. Kelly says, how can someone get a CGM without diabetes? So, again, if you ask your doctor to order any medical supply for you, unless it's like, hey, I want some morphine, why would your doctor not order that? You, so if you've ever had one episode of high blood sugar in your life, that's called hyperglycemia. That's a medical diagnosis. So tell your doctor to put that in the chart and then order you the damn CGM or you'll go somewhere else. Basically, you can say that lovingly and respectfully. But I mean, that's why would why would any doctor not be impressed with you and excited that you are so motivated to be healthy that you want to watch your blood sugar from minute to minute? What kind of doctor wouldn't be excited that his patient was that interested in their health? So hyperglycemia. Uh, if you've, uh, if you have more than three of the markers for metabolic syndrome, I've got a YouTube video that tells you what all the markers are. If you've got more than three of those markers, or if you've ever had more than three of those markers in your whole life, then that's metabolic syndrome. That is a diagnosis that will pay for a CGM. If that doesn't do it, you can just say, Hey, all right, I'll pay cash for it. Write the order. How's that? How is that? We did okay. Well done, little fella. Little fella. Um, for those of you who watch us every week, we won't be here next Monday because Ken is taking me out for my birthday next Monday and Tuesday. So you're going to have a week without us, but that's okay. I'm sure Dr. Barry will post a YouTube video. Or three. Or a three. Yeah. 
Thanks so much. Announcements? Thank you very much to our Facebook supporters. Uh, thanks so much to our patrons on patreon.com. You guys are part of our keto family and you are the reason that we do so many of the things we do. Um, Beckett says hi. He's relaxed now. Yeah, he's chill now. Yeah. He wore all his energy out. Anything else you can think of, woman? Um, if you haven't checked out my meatloaf recipe on my YouTube channel, you really need to. It's pretty amazing. If you've tried it, put it in the comments because um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And then my chicken soup recipe too. So if you're not following me, go subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, all the good things. Because I got some more good recipes coming up in the month of February. Oh, are you guys all following Beckett on Instagram? <laughs> Nisha never helps him with his Instagram. His no. Instagram is Beckett did it. I'm go, not trying to make him famous. Go follow Beckett on his Instagram. Poor little guy. He, he don't have many followers. It's just baby spam. So if you just want to see baby spam. Cute baby then, pictures. Yeah. Beckett, Beckett did it. There you go. <laughs> I got you, man. I got you covered. You're welcome. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Thanks so February. Much, guys. Happy February. Try to make yourself healthier every day. Be prepared for whatever comes every day because it could it, it could have been worse. Regardless of how bad it is, it could have been worse. Never forget that. Yep. And you're in control of one thing, what goes on that fork and enters your mouth. So That's right. If you're in control of nothing else in your life, yeah, you can, control you can still control what you put in your face. Yep. 100%. I love it. That's Thanks beautiful. for watching, guys. Do you love me? And dolls. Yeah, I love you. I mean it. See you guys. Bye.